Portsmouth Harbour, a major entry point for freight ships from around the world, and a thriving ferry port. It's these docks that provide the inspiration for local team teachers Justin Baker and Christopher Smith. Their jointly planned design and technology lesson is based on the requirements of the new secondary curriculum. OK, so today we are learning to design and make an environmentally friendly boat which will help boost world trade and boost the exports of a particular product from one country to Portsmouth. You will be assigned a country. The new curriculum is asking pupils to um, be able to identify with social, cultural differences, uh, environmental issues, and the lesson objectives that we have chosen for today are linked to those key concepts. On your tables in front of you, you have a variety of images. I'd like you to name the images using the name tags which are inside your brown envelopes. That one's probably... What do you think amazing. that is, then? What does it look like? Do you think that could be a pleasure boat? Pleasure boat, does that look like fun? No, no, no. It looks like a warship or something. Well, I have to have a look at what you've got. That looks like a cargo ship, definitely, because it's bigger, it's wider, so I can carry and, more. And what's it got on board? Cargo. The cargo, right. You could carry people. The key objective of the start activity is that the pupils can sort information, assess uh, information against criteria, and to look at boat design and to try and draw comparisons between those and then hopefully use those in their boat designs and models. Countries across the world really rely upon swapping products with each other. Trade, that we call it, is actually really important to people's livelihoods. In the new national curriculum, there is an entire key concept uh, labelled cultural understanding. So in this part of the lesson, we are reinforcing that locally available materials are used to, uh, as the export to boost the economy and, uh, and hopefully our, our pupils will understand um, a little bit more about the culture of the country. The first team will be representing Norway. And Norway is famous for its softwoods. So you will have softwoods for representing timber and you will have to travel with those on your boat. We wanted them to understand as well that there was products associated with those countries and how those products were important culturally and also economically to the, the countries involved. Next team will be Italy. It's famed for its lovely pasta. If I think about how we used to deliver projects, it was here's your situation, your problem, your brief. And it was kind of a just to hit those pieces of paper and to end up with a product. Now it's much more a case of, of uh, actually appreciating that that product can actually impact on the quality of somebody's life. And finally, China. Famous for its lovely rice. Again, slightly smaller individual product, but will rattle around maybe on board. So a few things to consider there. Sometimes these products need to be transported great distances, often by sea. Why do you guys think that we won't transport these via air? Is it because there's too much pollution? It is a lot of pollution created probably by, by the plane in terms of in the air, but there might be another reason as well. Can you carry more cargo? You can carry more cargo. If you think about it, it would have to be a very, very large aeroplane to carry as much as some of these cargo boats we've been looking at. I was hoping you might notice that to run an aeroplane takes a lot more money in terms of fuel and workers that need to work upon it than a boat would. So instead, it travels slowly but carries larger quantities. Last couple of lessons, you've been doing design ideas. We would like you to use these design ideas in your teams to come up with your final boat design. You must use the renewable energy source we give you, which will sit on the back of your boat and send it forward. A consideration. But before they start, the pupils get to check out the boat their teachers designed earlier. Mine's always black to match my attire. Oh, no! Oh! It's off. Yours is always uh, thin and a bit not very good. A bigger nudge. A bigger, bigger nudge. Is it sinking, Fraser? I think that's a capsize, that one. Oh. Hopefully what the pupils will learn from, from my boat is that there's some very, very, very key points that are missing, such as that there's no real buoyancy inherent in the design. It's about showing the pupils that weight distribution is quite important. Mm. Um, if you can uh, have as much surface area lifted off the water as possible, that's quite advantageous. Are you ready? Yes. Your 30 right. minutes begins now. So is this the design we're going to go with? Yes. Yeah? And um, we've decided to go with this one. 
um, because it's got quite a large space to put spaghetti in it because we're Italy. We want pupils to be able to go back to the starter part of the lesson, to look back over those boats that we looked at and pick out parts of the style, parts of the design, any mechanical advantage that they could take from those examples and then apply them via the teamwork to their own making. Team Italy have chosen to go with the catamaran style, uh, having picked up on maybe the, some of the local transportation, like the, the fast cat, which goes across to the Isle of Wight. I feel this is definitely an influence on their design. That boat doesn't have the carrying capacity needed. It hasn't got a bigger carrying capacity as that one, but it's got a far bigger one than that. You said that the, the legs, I would call them, would, would not have much of an impact because I would have to attach them. They would. Chris was instantly the, the dynamic leader. Um, and, and the others in the team, I, I think, were quite happy to, to allow Chris to lead them. What I tried to do was to get the rest of the team to actually make a bit more contribution. At the moment, I'm not really sure you're working as a team. Chris, I think maybe we might need to take a little bit of a back seat. Why don't we do, like, a catamaran, but it's pointy, pointy, pointy. Well, like that yeah, one. Yeah, but maybe a bit more pointy. pointy. Okay, let's get going, people. There's some, some very strong personalities within China. For these, to make more, we could get some of like, the wood or something, and, or something and put it along the sides, because then we can hold more and it won't fall out. Yeah. They did ask early on, could we actually make our cargo holders taller so we can fit more in. Mm. Which was good, that showed a sort of vision and an extension on, mm. on trying to fit more than what they could. What are you going to, what, Ella? And you're going to go like that? Or like that? Like that, yeah. Yeah, but how are you going to stick that on? You can make that the just fall flagpole off. shorter if you like. I don't know, something. I don't think they chose the materials too well. They probably could have spent a bit more time thinking about processes that they were using. What method of joining are you, are you using? Blue tack. Blue tack? Okay. Blue tack to hold the cargo in. With the cargo being rice as well, is probably not the best idea. The other alternative is to use the pin to come through the tray into the wood. Be very careful that if it does go through the other side, yeah. that you are aware of that yeah. and that you are planning to do something about that sharp edge. And the solution was? We could put, like, blue tack on it. Blue tack. Blue tack was the answer every time. So you're actually marking out accurately on the wood where to drill the holes so that when you put the two halves together, they match up. Yeah. I'm impressed. That's really come together in the last few minutes, hasn't it? I like the fact that the cargo had an impact on the buoyancy of the boat and that it was evenly distributed there, sort of measuring where it was going to fit. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you cutting your cargo down? Well, originally, the sticks are too big to fit in the container. Right. So if we cut them in half, they fit perfectly. So you can get more volume in. Excellent. Good idea, I like that. I've just had a good idea. Well, if we get poles, not necessarily round ones, but stick them in the back and then um, attach, make them rather wide and attach the propeller to that, they'll have lots of space to spin. Yeah. Is that yeah. a good idea? Yeah, that, yeah that's yeah. plenty of them. So, yeah, there and there. Okay. Perfect. Through that one. We just put the um, pin through, it just snapped our actual cargo box. We're just trying to think of a way. Trying to, to put as much blue tech as we can. So to make to make it stay on, strong. Yeah. We need to do other sides so, now. Yeah. We need to do those two. Wait until we actually put it all together because we've got to lift it up. Oh, no, we're just, that's just the we've thing. got to hammer it. I think maybe they focus too much on the cargo and maybe not enough on getting the propulsion system right and allowing enough space for the, the rudder to, to flex and go mm. left and right in order mm -hmm. to propel it forward. See if you can turn it. Let's stop. We'll just do it then. Put it there, then it won't hit the propeller. Let's do it. Watch your hand. We need to all try and stick the, all the things that have fallen off it back on. Then. OK, guys, if you are ready, if your team is ready, just sit down nice and quiet. Can we stop working now, Norway? Stop working. Let's have you over by the channel. The moment of truth, and China are first to launch off. That's the back. Three, two, one. Oh! 
It's still going. Still, still going. going. Still going. I tell you what, if I wanted rice for my dinner and I lived in Portsmouth, I'd be a bit upset if it got to me soggy. <laughs> what distance do we have there? 56. 56. Well done. Italy. Are you ready, kids? Three. Two. two one. Go! Ah. Yes. So, how far have we got here? Let's measure again. 67. 67, I agree with that. Right, and our final team today is ben. Norway. Like not too far. Is that far enough? Yeah. yeah. You sure? Yeah. I'd, I'd, say, I'd say that much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everyone agree that much? Yeah. yeah. Does it flow? Yeah. I hope it does. OK. Yeah. Three, Three, two, two one. Go. Oh. I've got 82. Yeah. 82, Mr. Well, 82 yeah. and a half. Uh, and that was Norway. Norway were successful because in the actual race, their, their team leader, Chris, had made a decision that he really wanted the boat to be long, I think, to gain a, a distance advantage, possibly, mm. maybe a cynic would say. But as well as that, they also had the hooks very far apart. So in doing that, there was no obvious uh, object that could get in the way of the propulsion system, so it wasn't going to get caught like maybe the other teams did. Yep. No but the distance travelled is not the only criterion on which the boats are judged. Then in teamwork, I thought they were excellent. Yeah, they were pretty good, but I didn't think they were as good as this, these guys here. They were... uh, well, maybe we could be I a disagree. Top. I think that that was the best. What we did was we evaluated uh, distance travelled, load carried, yeah, the appearance of the boat was important as well as the teamwork. Thereby addressing um, all of the, the key points that as a designer in real life they would have to address in order for their product to be successful. So the first one, which was, uh, which was teamwork, we felt that the, that the winning team for 25 points worth was, was actually China. We next uh, awarded points for the cargo carried or how much they tried to carry. We felt that the team from Norway did spend a bit more extra time trying to chop the cargo up to fit. The uh, quality of the boat build was an interesting one. I, I really rated the Italian boat because of the, the nature of the catamaran design. Mm. Before the winners are announced, the pupils get the chance to assess their own performance. How well did we perform as a team? Uh, well, we, I mean, we, we performed we, um, really good. At the beginning, we was a little bit rough, but yeah. towards the end, we performed really yeah. well. And it shows in how our boat came out and how it did. It went a bit at the wrong angle, didn't it? I think we needed to think of a better way of attaching these or even using, in the end, I think it would have actually been better to use those woods instead of the thicker woods. OK, ladies and gentlemen, can we have a quiet, please? OK, in Ooh. third position today, can you give them a humongous clap, please, for Team China? Ooh. Our second place team today is Team Italy. <laughs> And finally, our winners today. Oh, you know, it's Team Norway. Well done. Woo! Give him a clap. He's bringing the boat up. The new design and technology curriculum is extremely important because we're trying to teach today's pupils to become more culturally and socially aware. Good job. Well and become creative problem solvers that can actually make a difference in, uh, in the life and well-being of other people.